like a nexus. I'm waffling here quite yeah, a lot. Aren't I'm, I? There's really I'm no, moving my head. There's really no need to spend this long on it. I think I've got the point across. Yeah. And so let's just cancel that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, come on. No, nothing really else here. Um, how, how much longer? We've got nine minutes, but another ten minutes of this waffle. This is a bit like a director's cut, isn't it, on a DVD? <laughs> yeah. The director's commentary. Yeah, I'm so, kind of thinking hard. Okay, hub transport. So the hub transport role we talked about, uh, the main purpose of this is to move mails or messages between mailbox stores. Oh. You could have a, a transport rule in there so we can detect what the message is like. So, for example, we could say if the, if the message contains the word important, we'll make sure that that gets sent in high priority. I can go to journal rules and say if it contains the word confidential, we'll make sure that message is journaled and it never can be deleted. So this is not really the same as email filtering, is it? Not really, but you could use a transport rule to do some email filtering. I could say if it contains the word confidential, then drop it. Or if it contains the word marketing, then send an NDR back or something like that. <laughs> or if it comes from marketing, just drop it in a bit. <laughs> That's... No, no. Okay. No, they, they do a lot to spend money. Those, 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 are they people? I know. Anyway, here's, the, here's client access. So I'm obviously showing you that web access here. So on, under the server properties, if I go to properties of the directory, what am I going to show you? Authentication to it. Um, again, we've got segmentation there, so I can stop you from seeing a certain amount of, of features from AWA. Right. Um, this is where you can access public file shares. So this is quite good. So I'm out the, out the web access if I'm browsing at home. Ha, ha, ha. I'll stop there then. Don't find that interesting. Right. I'm trying to sync up my voice. I'm trying to sync it up as well. It's, it's, well, I was laughing at something. It's a disaster. <laughs> right, so recipient, there's all your mailboxes. That's good, isn't it? And uh, there's your server. Right. Right. And there's your mailboxes again. <laughs> yeah. um, and you can see you're in there now. And there's me. Right. That's my name. Who's Bob Scott? Bob Scott is someone who I used to work with him, actually. He taught me SMS. Oh, right. So, um, and I thought it was quite You can blame name. him for everything, then. Yeah, but what you can see here is a new feature. So I'm enabling the archive feature on my mailbox, and this just gives me an additional section in my message store. It's actually a 10 gig section by default, and the idea is it for me to store my archive messages, and we certainly will do an episode on that mm. when we get to it. Yawn. <laughs> Something like EAS? EAS, which I say in Zantaz. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I was talking about Zantats we use for email archiving. And no need to use it. No need to use it. Now, if you look at the archiving solutions out there at the moment, uh, they're so much more feature-rich than what you've got now. I think what most people want is they want their archive to be stored in a different server, which is just not possible at present. But Microsoft sort of hinted that in the next service pack, then it might, we might see that. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, I do I'm asking a question about space, I think. Uh, what? Space and time? That kind of space. <laughs> no, um, storage space you need. Um, if you were to archive everything on the same service as uh, the exchange servers. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I don't even understand that question, C face. I'm going to answer <laughs> a different one. Because you know? <laughs> lots of people look at archiving solutions and they say, yeah, my archive, the point of it, I want to put it on an offsite server and I want cheap disks on it. But when you think about Exchange 2010, one of the uh, major advantages is the disk I.O. to it. So the argument Microsoft says is everything's cheap. Sorry, everything's, yeah, everything's cheap, even in a production server. So why bother shipping to an archive server? You're paying for a new server, and you're paying for a second set of disks. Why not just put all the disks in one production server, and that can be your archive as well. If you do want that off-site, of course, you can make that part of the database availability group, and you can replicate your entire archive and your messaging store off-site. The other thing about your archive, I suppose, to work, one thing to work or to mention is it's only available online. Right. Okay, so you can't take well, you could take it offline if you wanted to, you put it in a PST file, but presumably you want to create a group policy or something to stop people from creating PST right. files. I'm clearly puzzled by what you're saying. Yeah, yeah I don't know um, what, what your role is in this episode, really. <laughs> um, yeah. Right, so we're going somewhere else now. I think we're probably going to have a look at Outlet Web Access. Oh. Yeah. There's been a few changes to the web access. One of them is uh, they changed the name. So although the acronym is called OWA, it's now called Outlet Web App, as you can see. So where am I going to go to first? My mailbox, maybe? Yeah, so Portage OWA. And it's mm. nice. Mm. You're saying you can control everything. Mm. Not just yet, I'm not. I'm, go oh. I'm going to that in a minute. You can see that clearly if you look at the screenshot. <laughs> this is OWA we're looking at. So this is my mailbox. Um, at the moment, I'm not really showing you anything. 
exciting because there's no external email, there's no tips or anything. It's just really showing that I've got managed to get it installed really. It's just yeah. showing up a little bit. After three weeks. Yeah, after three weeks. Uh, and still before most of the exchange co consultants of our organisation. <laughs> So yeah, this is a, a new feature. We can go into ECP, forward slash ECP, Exchange Control Panel. So this, I can go in and I can edit my own attributes, much like uh, the application you created, CFA, for Active Directory, um, which we, we should devote more time to in a later episode, perhaps. But this is the point in the episode where I'm kind of slagging your, your one off. You know, yeah. And you're protecting it. And ultimately, I, yeah, I'm being an arse. Your app's pretty, pretty smart. Um, the other thing we can do, as an administrator, I can go into a, the ECP and I can start looking at other users mailboxes so for example I could say <laughs> I guess that well didn't I <laughs> I can pick and choose um, Bob Scott and I can look at their attributes I can say they're out of office I can control oh, wow. what groups they're a member of and tell people that they're out of office <laughs> uh, so you have the permission that you I suppose you have to have the permission to do I've that got to have the permissions yeah right. that's the other thing they've done in exchange they've made it easy to create um, sort of mail administrators, people who don't have any technical permissions, but they do have the ability to look through people's mail. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things like your security officer. I'm not quite sure what I'm showing now. I, I look intrigued. Uh, no. No idea. Um, no, talk to you, baby. Do some talking. Well, my lips aren't moving. I, I do your move my, lips head, are. My, my head quite a lot, don't I? I need to just that out. Okay, so what are we doing here? Um, oh, I, now I, you're slagging me off, I think. Yeah, now I'm talking about the application. So I'm saying a lot of the time here, with Active Directory, it should be a centralised repository of all information. And it's only now we're starting to find out that people are doing that. They're, they're starting to use their attributes. They're starting to put their manager in, their organisation in mm. that. Because other apps also hook into Active Directory. Absolutely, like SharePoint, one of the ones that, yeah. that you do with. Does that look at your manager to maybe forward emails for? Yes. Potentially workflow or something like that. So yeah. these attributes get really important to get populated, and now we can give the user the ability to modify their own attributes. The trouble is, re realistically, users just simply don't do this, which yeah. is when CFA's web app comes in at logon. <laughs> well, it can, yeah, it, it we, can come in at logon. We can put a, uh, the logon in the logon script, set a flag, and then launch like a browser to force uh, users to change the credentials. And also, we can also control the input of the credentials with a customized web app, that's what we're talking about, um, by, let's say, only allowing them to select from a particular department. Okay. Therefore, because it's free text at the moment, and if you don't, you know, type down, then users essentially could put whatever they want. Sort of like a drop-down box? Yes. Okay. okay. I'm shaking my head now. Yeah, so, <laughs> You're apparently right. talking for a lot longer yeah. than necessary. On, on, Obviously, on, on I think I'm part. asking so a question you can't answer. That that's very rare. That's very rare. So um, hopefully, I'll be closing this down. I don't know if I've got much else to show you, really, but um, I, I'm just going to blatantly ignore what's going on the screen because I don't think that's adding any more value. Yeah. I just talk about maybe future exchange episodes and what what we plan to do after this little introduction is um, take an exchange 2007 installation and do a migration of that to exchange 2010. So if you do stick around, you might see an episode where we do do a real migration. So that might be a little bit more interesting. Um, other ones we we'll certainly do is archiving. So we'll do a little bit of an archiving. Right. Um, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll have some SQL episodes coming up Oops. too. Okay. And, and we have a new logo. Yeah, yeah. All these problems we had. You notice this episode's effectively been in three parts now, isn't it? <laughs> so we've had the first part, the second part without audio, and then the second part audio, all stitched together. And you know, you need to look very, very closely to detect all of this. I mean, I, I think it's very similar to the Roswell incident, <laughs> the, the, the total professionalism that's gone into making this episode. I, I like the whole Chinese movie styley, where you know we're doing the <laughs> dubbing and nothing matches, nothing marries. I mean, probably not even the st right, correct storyline. That, that's true. But hey, <laughs> and, and some of my hand movements—they're quite in the air, aren't they? They're quite sort of kung fu. -y. Am I going to do one? Yeah. Please, please, please. No. no. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, just clicking back to Exchange here, I don't think I've got much else to show you, but let's just load up the console again and perhaps show you the mailboxes. We've only seen that a few times now. And let, let, let's look at the mailboxes under the organisation. Remember, that's where they're all defined now. And, uh, mm. yeah, I clicked through a few ones, earn the money. I think you said something about how you can move.